The integrated rate laws are equations that we can use to calculate the concentration of a reactant at any time in a chemical reaction. They come from taking the integrals of our standard rate laws. In this video, I'm going to show you the integrated rate laws for first, second, and zero order reactions, but I'm not going to go through the derivation of the rate laws. If you're curious to see where they come from, I'm sure that the derivation is in your textbook and you can check it out. But from my experience, most students don't care about watching the derivation of these rate laws. For a first order reaction, the integrated rate law is the natural log of the concentration of reactant A at time t, and I'm going to write all these symbols down once I get the equations written down, that is equal to the negative rate constant times time t plus the natural log of the concentration of A at the beginning of the reaction. So like I said, let's write some of these symbols down. Um, t is referring to the time that we're interested in calculating the concentration for, so whatever the time might be. And as you know, k is the rate constant that will be provided to you. A with that subscript zero symbol is used to represent the initial concentration of that reactant A. And then A with that subscript T symbol is used to represent the concentration of reactant A at whatever time we are interested in doing this calculation for, whatever that time might be. For a second order reaction, the integrated rate law is a little different. It's one over the concentration of A at time t. That is equal to positive kt, so not a negative sign this time, plus one over the natural log of A at time zero. Uh, and again, all these symbols are the same as they are for the first order reaction. And then last but not least, for a zero order reaction, the integrated rate law is A at time t, is equal to negative sign again, negative kt plus a at time zero. So typically with um, using the integrated rate laws, typically a problem, we have an example right here, you're given all but one of these variables. So maybe you're given the rate constant, the time, and the initial concentration, and you're being asked to solve the concentration at a particular time. And that's what we have in this practice problem. It tells us that it's a first order reaction, and we need to know what the order is so that we know which equation we should be using. So this is a first order reaction. It's giving us the value of the rate constant. It's giving us the value of the initial concentration, and it wants us to calculate the concentration after 150 seconds have passed. Because it's a first order reaction, we have to use this equation right here. It says that the natural log of the concentration of A at the time in question, for us it's 150 seconds. Sometimes people will write that in the subscript, 150, um, but a lot of times people just leave it a T. That is equal to, because it's a first order reaction, negative rate constant, 5.7 times 10 to the minus four inverse seconds or one over seconds. Um, the next term is the time. You do wanna make sure that your time units are consistent with the units of the rate constant. This, in this case it is, they're both um, units of seconds, plus the natural log of the concentration of A at the beginning of the reaction, which is 0.53 molar, 0.53. So all that we have to do here is just work the math out. I'm going to start by solving the math on the right-hand side of the equation first. I'm going to begin with the natural log calculation, doing the natural log of 0.53, and then I am going to add that to the negative 5.7 times 10 to the minus 4 times 150. And this gives me an answer of negative 0.720. So then all I have to do now is solve for A at time T by taking the inverse of the natural log, which is E, E to the negative 0 0.720, which is uh, 
seven molar.